Hello students, welcome to TSAT classes. Welcome to the session on Indian Polity and Constitution for TSPSC Group 1 Mains. As a part of series friends, with regards to Group 1 Mains, TSPSC, Paper 3 and the Indian Polity and Constitution syllabus, we have completed 4 chapters and today let us start chapter 5 of Indian polity and constitution. So what are we going to discuss in this chapter 5? If you look at this chapter 5, chapter 5 consists of very elaborated syllabus. What is that? It deals with the federal system that is a center state relations, issues, challenges pertaining to federal structure. The local self governance 73rd and 74th amendment act very very important for the exam. And also talks about the Panchayat Raj in, uh, institutions and municipalities and resolutions to interstate disputes with reference to water disputes, challenges and its implementation. Completely the legislative relations between centre and state, the administrative relations between centre and state, the financial relations between centre and state as well as your Panchayat Raj institutions as well as the municipalities is covered in this particular chapter. Not only these topics, it also mentions about interstate water disputes, interstate you know councils, zonal councils, federal features, federal structure of India. So let us see few main questions, few important main questions with respect to this particular topic. Let us see the first question. If you look at the first question, right, as I told you before, right, in different classes, Whenever we discuss about these topics, whenever we discuss about this type of topics for mains, we need to underline the keywords within each question. When you underline the keywords within each question, then it ensures the scope of the answer which you need to write. Right? It shows the scope of the answer which you wish to write. Now, look at the first question. See, the first question here starts with something called elaborate. See, elaborate, you know, in detail. Elaborate the evolution of local self governance in India. And did it succeed in bringing democratic decentralization? What is the meaning of decentralization? Right? division of powers or devolution of powers, devolution of powers, devolution of powers from center to the states. And with respect to this, let us discuss the evolution of the local self-governance in India. If you look at the local self-governance in India, the local self governance in india was not given not given constitutional status in the original constitution in the original constitution there was no constitutional status for the local self governance in india the original constitution discussed only two provisions in relation to local self governance. What are they? There are only two provisions which are discussed in the original constitution. The first one is right, Schedule 7. In Schedule 7, the local self governance is part of state list subject. It is part of state list subject. It is part of your state list. As it is part of state list, the state legislature, the state legislature has all the rights to make laws on local self-governance in India. The second one is Article 40. Article 40. Article 40 of Directive Principle of State Policy. 
Article 40 of Directive Principle of State Policy says it is a duty of the state to constitute Panchayati Raj institutions for village self governance. The local self governance, the local self governance are of two types. The first one is rural local self governance. Rural local self governance. The second one is urban local self governance. Rural local self governance and urban local self governance. Now, this rural local self governance is called Panchayati Raj institutions. And the urban local self governance is called municipalities. It's called municipalities. Now, let us discuss about the evolution of the rural local self governance in India. Let us discuss the evolution of the rural local self governance in India. We will discuss in brief. Let us discuss in brief. Firstly, we need to start with something called 1952. What happened in 1952, friends? In 1952, right, Government of India started Community Development, Development Program. Community Development Program. Right? Why? The main aim is to develop a com village as a community. What is the meaning of development? Eradication of poverty. Ensuring there is no, you know, there is employment, there is no unemployment. Increasing the standard of living of poor. Now, in 1953, in the next year, the Nehru government has launched something called National Extension Service Program, National Extension Service Program. As part of the National Extension Service Program, the main aim is to extend the central schemes to the village level to reach the last person of the village. Now, in 1957, very important for the exam, in 1957, to see how the Community Development Program and National Extension Service Program is doing, the government has constituted Balavantarai, Balavantarai Mehta Committee, Balavantarai Mehta Committee. Balavantarai Mehta Committee was constituted. Why? What is the purpose? To look after the functioning of these two major programs. Now, Balavantarai Mehta Committee has recommended, has recommended to constitute a Panchayati Raj institution by each state through a state law. By a state law, every state should have a Panchayati Raj institution. Balavantarai Mehta Committee is the first state to recommend a Panchayati Raj institution in India, but with the help of a state law, with the help of a law, not by the constitution. So, the reason Balavantarai Mehta is called the father of Panchayati Raj institutions in India. He is called the father of Panchayati Raj institutions in India. Keeping the recommendations of Balavantarai Mehta Committee, in 1959, October 2nd, Rajasthan became the first state to constitute a Balavantara, to constitute a Panchayati Raj institution followed by Andhra Pradesh, followed by Andhra Pradesh. Very, very important for the exam. Very, very important for the exam. So, this is 1957. Now, in 1977, Janata government has constituted Ashok Mehta Committee. Ashok Mehta Committee. Ashok Mehta Committee was constituted to review the Panchayati Raj institutions in India. Right? 
the Panchayati Raj institutions in entire state constituted by the state law in India. Then Ashok Mehta committee said there are 132 changes. It recommended 132 changes, but this is not important. You need to mention one point for sure. Balavantarai Mehta committee said to constitute PRS. Ashok Mehta committee is the first committee is the first committee to recommend constitutional status. It is a first committee to recommend the constitutional status to the existing Panchayati Raj institutions in India. Very, very important. Then we have something called 1985. 1985 GVK Rao committee by planning commission. By planning commission to review the Panchayati Raj institutions in India. You know what GVK Rao committee said? The Panchayati Raj institutions in India are like grass without roots. They are like grass without roots. What is the meaning of grass without roots? Institutions, institutions without power. Institutions without power and authority. So, the reason in 1986, in 1986, L.M. Singhvi Committee was constituted. L.M. Singhvi Committee was constituted. Now, what is this L.M. Singhvi Committee? L.M. Singhvi Committee, Rajiv Gandhi government has constituted this and recommended constitutional status to the existing PRIs. On the recommendations of L. L.M. Singhvi Committee in 1989, 64th Constitution Amendment Bill was initiated, passed in Lok Sabha, but passed in Lok Sabha, but rejected in Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha rejected the 64th Constitution Amendment Bill. Then came the P. V. Narasimha Rao government. The P. V. Narasimha Rao government has initiated and passed the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act, which gave constitutional status to Panchayati Raj institutions. To Panchayati Raj institutions. This 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act is a landmark in the history because after 42 years of the constitution came into force, the constitution finally decentralized the powers to the Panchayati Raj institutions. The 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act came into force on 24th April 1993. This 24th April is called National Panchayati Raj Day. National Panchayati Raj Day in India every year. Okay. This is the evolution of the Panchayati Raj institutions in India. The local self governance also includes, you know, your both rural and also urban. Let us see how the urban local self governance evolved in India now. How urban local governance evolved in India. Let us see that 1687-88. What happened in 1687-88? The first municipal corporation the first municipal corporation was formed where at madras at madras by the british the first municipal corporation was formed in 1687-88 at madras and followed by 1726 1726 at bombay calcutta at bombay and calcutta we have the municipal corporations which are formed in 1726. Very, very important. Next, we have 1870. Right? There was a draft proposal, draft proposal on local self-governance by Mayo. By Mayo. And this draft proposal is called 
mayo resolution mayo resolution on local self governance local self governance then we have 1882 very important you have to mention this point for sure while writing the answer 1882 what happened in 1882 what happened that mr rippon rippon is the first person to give a law on local self governance called magna carta magna carta on local self governance in india it is called magna carta of local self governance in india mr rippon is called the father the father of local self governance the father of local self governance the next thing we have is 1919 the government of india act 1919 made local self governance which is part of the provincial list subject provincial list subject it is part of provincial list subject then we have something called 1935 government of india act government of india act made local self governance part of the provincial list subject list subject this is in 1935 next what happened after 1935 we have 1950 1950 local self governance is part of state list subject state list subject as in constitution constitution next what happened very important 1989 under the recommendations of lm singhvi committee under the recommendations of lm singhvi committee under the recommendations of lm singhvi committee 65th constitution amendment bill called nagara palika bill nagara palika bill was initiated in the parliament passed in lok sabha rejected in rajya sabha this is called 65th constitution amendment bill then we have 1992 1992 P V Narasimha Rao government, P V Narasimha Rao government, right, has initiated and passed seventy fourth Constitution Amendment Act, seventy fourth Constitution Amendment Act, which came into force on first June nineteen ninety three, which came into force on first June nineteen ninety three. This is how the municipality system evolved in India. we have different types of municipalities what are they right municipal corporation municipal council port trust cantonment boards notified areas right all these are called municipalities only okay so this is the answer you need to write for this particular question for this particular question let us see the next question right what is the next question we have yes discuss the salient features of 73rd and 74th constitution amendment act see what is the salient features of 73rd 74th amendment act right so 73rd constitution amendment act 1992 74th constitution amendment act 1992 correct so what are the salient features right let us see panchayati raj institutions that is 73rd constitution amendment act municipalities municipalities that is your 74th constitution amendment act okay firstly 73rd 74th let us see the similarities then we will see the differences firstly let's discuss about something else first let us see 73rd two two or three points then we'll say which part is okay this act came into force on 24th april 1993 this act came into force on 24th april 
the 73rd constitution amendment act added the 73rd constitution amendment act added part 9 of the constitution and this part 9 is discussed from article 243 to article 243 o article 243 to article 243 o 73rd constitution amendment act added schedule 11 schedule 11 of the constitution which consists of very important 29 functional functional subjects 29 functional subjects to be performed by the panchayati raj institutions right now coming to municipalities it came into force on 1st june 1993 and it added part 9a from article 243p to article 243zg discussed from article 243p to article 243zg okay g for genius okay municipality 74th amendment act also added schedule 12 which consists of 18 functional subjects 18 functional subjects to be performed by municipalities both panchayati raj institutions as well as the municipalities as three tier system three tier system it has three tier system three tier system <coughs> three tier system what is the three tier system we have right we have a municipality in the village level a municipality in the village level a municipality in the intermediate level and a municipality in district level see this intermediate level is called mandals in telangana and andhra pradesh it is called mandals and we have three tier hierarchy in municipalities what is that nagara panchayati nagara panchayati right we have municipal council and we have municipal corporation see the members at all three levels are elected directly by the people the members at all the three levels are elected directly by the people the chairman of the panchayati at intermediate and district level are elected among the members the chairman of the village level is elected as decided by the state legislature the chairman of the all the levels of the municipality are elected among the members this you remember now coming to reservations 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 in both panchayatis as well as municipality in both panchayati as well as municipality right one sc and st reservation of seats sc and st reservation of seats is mandatory mandatory as per their population as per their population Two, women reservation of seats is also mandatory up to 33 percent is mandatory three obc reservation obc reservation is not mandatory who will decide the state level the state government decide to give obc reservation or not to give obc reservation this is your reservations this is your reservations now coming to duration the coming to duration right both panchayati and municipality the duration is five years the both panchayati and municipality the duration is five years exempted areas exempted areas now what is the exempted areas right for panchayati raj institutions it is exempted from schedule five and schedule six areas panchayati raj 73rd amendment act is not applicable to schedule 5 and schedule 6 areas but parliament by a law can make 73rd constitution amendment act applicable in schedule 5 schedule 6 areas did parliament made any law yes pisa act 1996 panchayati raj panchayati raj extension to schedule area act of 1996 coming to municipality municipality is exempted from 
union territories. But President of India by a presidential order can extend this to municipalities as well. So, this is your some of the salient features of the uh, 73rd and 74th amendment act. So, there are much more salient features, but this is only 10 marks. So, you need to write 150 to 180 words. So, these are the main important points you need to cover. So, this is the chapter 5 uh, first class. I will see you again in uh, second class of the chapter 5. Till then, happy learning. Jai Hind. Thank you.